If you're in construction, then you're in the right place. Welcome to the Constructed Behaviors Podcast. I'm your host, Barb Allen. I'm a woman with decades of experience in the construction industry, and most of it on the job site. I know how rewarding this industry can be, but like you, I also know that we could improve. Let's work together to make changes from the inside out. In a recent episode, I had a guest say the words, women can't do this job. And as I was editing the interview, I went back and forth on whether or not I was going to delete that section. Ultimately, I decided not to delete it. I decided not to delete it because I felt like it'd be a really good catalyst for an episode such as this one. I think many times we hear people say, women can't do this job or women don't want this job. And today I wanna focus on the women can't do this job phrase. When people say women can't do anything, you're excluding an entire gender from a capability. It's like saying men can't multitask. There may be a general understanding of the male brain that tells us in general, men struggle to multitask. But saying men can't multitask is not fair. It is not true of all men. Similar, saying women can't speaks toward female physiology. As if we're not physically strong enough to do the job, which may be true for many women, but it is not true for all women. But let's dig even a little deeper. What jobs in today's construction industry are actually so physically demanding that only certain body types can successfully do them? I don't know of one. I'm not saying they don't exist. It's literally a question I'm asking. And if you know of a job that women could not do, an entire gender of people is not capable of doing, then message me. I would love to know that. I I like to learn things. Um, I just don't know that it exists anymore out there. And I say that for, for three reasons in particular. The amount of safety education that we've had in the last 10 years has taught us how to lift smarter, reducing body fatigue and increasing strength in order to lift things. Technology has developed devices that provide leverage that reduces the amount of physical strength actually needed for leveraging items, materials, equipment, and even more prevalent, cranes, lulls, and skidsters have gone from being on a superintendent's wish list to standard job site equipment for most jobs. All of these things have reduced, or in some cases, eliminated the need for brute human force. But even if there is a job where brute physical strength is needed, are all men built to do that job? Is it fair to say women can't when there are men that can't? Because you and I both know the answer to the question, are all men built to do brute strength jobs? The answer to that question is no. Instead, the phrase really needs to be, this job isn't meant for everyone. Let's go back for a minute and talk about the strength of women that so many times is underestimated. Take me, for example. I'm a small woman. I'm 5'5", 125 pounds, but I am physically capable of much more than people expect me to be. I have a deceptive amount of muscle mass that was developed on job sites. I want to reiterate, I did not go into construction physically strong. Instead, it was developed as I worked to prove myself as a valuable crew member who was capable 
of carrying her own weight. Literally. In episode number one, I talked about how game changing it was for me when I was able to carry my first sheet of three quarter inch plywood. Three quarter inch plywood is not actually that heavy. I, memory tells me it was like 32 pounds, but it's incredibly awkward. It's all about how you carry it. On job sites, I had to carry 50 pound boxes and nails. It's a technique, learning to lift with your legs instead of with your arms and with your back. It's amazing how much more you can pick up using your legs. <laughs> or thinking back to the winter of 1997, I spent that winter carrying eight foot Simon forms through several inches of snow while wearing what felt like one of everything from the Carhartt store along with a pair of boots that felt like dead weight tied to my feet. I can't even tell you how much I weighed with all of those clothes on. I can tell you that it was quite an experience to have to go to the bathroom, particularly in a portage on when you're taking off that many layers as a woman. They really should come up with a way that's easier for women to go to the bathroom when you're wearing all of that. That winter alone, I put on 10 pounds of muscle mass. All of these are examples, and there are so many more, of what developed the strength that I needed to be a valued crew member. I'm saying let women choose for themselves. Change your wording from women can't to it's not for everyone. I honestly can't think of a single thing that men can do physically that women as an entire gender cannot do. Women, on the other hand, are physically capable of something that men are not, and that's childbirth. And I'm pretty damn sure that there isn't a single job in construction physically harder than childbirth. So let's stop labeling what women can't do, and instead, let's see what they can. If you know someone that could benefit from this particular episode, then share it with them. Or if you want to continue to learn about the untapped and underutilized resources that will take your business to the next level, then follow the podcast. You don't want to miss an episode where we discuss what you needed to hear. And lastly, there is a link in the show notes that will allow you to reach out to me directly if you want to accelerate that learning curve. Thanks for listening. Talk soon.